when most people think about the importance of meal timing, they're thinking about it in relation to fat loss. They want to know when and how much they should eat to lose weight most effectively. But when it comes to optimizing weight loss, health, and longevity, meal timing just isn't that important. What matters most is how much you eat, not necessarily when you eat. As long as you're eating the right amount of calories and protein, you can distribute meals whenever you want. But that's not to say that meal timing never matters, because it can matter a lot when it comes to things like maximizing athletic performance. And it may also have some potential benefits for muscle building. Now, we're going to take a deep dive into how much protein you should eat and how you should distribute that protein in another video. But today, we're going to talk about how you should eat to maximize performance. We're going to talk about how much, when, and what to eat to get the most out of your workouts. In timing your nutrition to get the most out of your workouts, there are three periods that matter. The window before your workout, during your workout, and after your workout. Now, what you eat at one window may affect another. For example, what you eat before your workout will definitely affect what you need to eat after. Now, let's take a closer look at each of these windows. Within the one to two hour period of starting your workout, your primary goal should be to optimize the total amount of fuel you're taking in, as well as the type of fuel so that you can perform with maximal effort. During moderate to high intensity endurance and weight training sessions, your body requires carbs as the main source of fuel. Stored carbs in the liver and muscle, called glycogen, supplies most of this, so you want to make sure these fuel stores are pretty topped off going into the exercise. That means eating a healthy amount of carbs before your workout. Having plenty of carbs available as glycogen likely means being able to push harder in the gym or for endurance athletes, go further faster. But there are even benefits to eating carbs that extends beyond its role as fuel. Some studies show that the amount of glycogen you have going into a workout impacts muscle protein synthesis as well as the rate of muscle protein breakdown. If you go into a training session on empty, pathways that activate muscle building may be blunted while processes that mediate breakdown are enhanced. But gaining the most muscle possible requires that the opposite happen. Muscle protein synthesis should be maximized while muscle protein breakdown is minimized. Eating plenty of carbs and topping off glycogen stores before you work out can help you do just that. You'll be prioritizing anabolic processes while limiting muscle breakdown. For people interested in adding size and strength, this is kind of a big deal. And if you're prioritizing muscle building, it can also be a good idea to eat high quality protein before your workout. Now, when you're working out, your body is activating pathways that build muscle. But you can really add to this effect by eating protein before a workout. Doing so primes your body for muscle synthesis and faster recovery. Now a quick note on fat. There really isn't much of a role for fat in the pre-workout window because not only does your body have plenty of fat stores to draw from, but it's also not your body's preferred form of fuel when you're doing really hard high intensity work at say 70% of VO2 max or above. When you're doing that, your body's going to turn to carbs for fuel because fat just takes too long to break down and it requires a lot of oxygen. So there's no need for you to load up on fat before the workout. You can save it for other times throughout the day. Within two hours of a workout, it can be a good idea to have about one to four grams of carbs per total kilogram of body weight, depending on the duration and intensity of the workout. Let's see what that looks like for two different people. One who weighs 150 pounds and another who weighs 200 pounds. Now, even on the lower end of the recommendations, that's a lot of carbs. Most people should eat at the very low end of the range since they're doing more traditional style gym workouts that don't burn a tremendous amount of calories. But the few people who are elite athletes or who are doing 90 minutes or longer of continuous intense training should eat more towards the higher end of the range since they tend to burn more calories in their workout and have much higher energy and carb requirements in general. And this is probably somewhat less important if you plan on eating protein after a workout, but if your main goal is to build muscle, you should eat 20 to 40 grams of a high quality protein that's rich in essential amino acids and leucine, so something like whey. Older people and people with more lean body mass may want to shoot towards the higher end of that recommendation. And if you want to get really precise, just aim to eat 0.4 to 0.5 grams of protein per kilogram of lean body mass. For fun, here's what one of those meals might look like for each of the cases we talked about. You may have heard about people downing Gatorade or taking branched chain amino acids in the middle of a workout. But this is really only applicable to endurance athletes or people working out continuously for 90 minutes or longer. 
Weightlifters typically don't deplete glycogen fast enough to warrant eating carbs during a workout, especially if they had a carb-rich meal beforehand. And when it comes to protein breakdown, they probably don't really need to be concerned enough to be drinking protein shakes during the workout. Again, especially if you've already had a pre-workout meal rich in carbs or protein. But if you're an endurance athlete going on runs that exceed an hour and a half in length, it can be a good idea to consume 30 to 60 grams of carbs per hour, dividing that dose up over 15 minute intervals to provide a steady supply of energy to optimize performance. What you eat after a workout is really gonna depend on two things. The first, what you ate before your workout, and the second, how important it is to replace glycogen really quickly. In bodybuilding circles several years ago, it was common to see people slamming protein shakes immediately after a workout and even taking special carbohydrate supplements to spike insulin and quickly replenish glycogen. This 30 minute time frame after training was called the anabolic window and it was promoted as the time where you could use optimal nutrition to make the most out of the work you put in. Protein was particularly emphasized, but ironically, eating protein right after a workout may not even be necessary depending on what was eaten in the pre-workout meal and when that pre-workout meal was eaten. If enough protein is eaten before a workout, it can function as both a pre- and post-exercise meal because of the length of time it takes to absorb and digest protein. The anabolic effect of eating protein usually lasts around four hours, and it can last about an hour or two longer depending on how large the meal was. So if your last meal was only an hour or two before your workout, you really don't need to stress about immediately drinking a post-workout shake. The amino acids are already in your bloodstream promoting muscle synthesis and recovery. But if you didn't include protein in your pre-workout meal, or your last meal was more than around three to four hours before starting your workout, you'll wanna eat protein as soon as possible after your workout is over. Another thing that people used to prioritize during the anabolic window was consuming fast absorbing carbohydrates. The idea here was that such carbs would spike insulin, helping to stop muscle breakdown and through that contribute to a greater net increase in muscle gain. But since that time, it's been shown that taking 20 to 40 grams of a quality protein-like whey increases insulin to the point where the anti-catabolic effects are maximized. So eating carbs with a protein won't bring about greater effects here but it can be beneficial to eat carbs as soon as possible after workout. This is because your body is really sensitive to insulin after exercise. So your body's kind of like a dry sponge. It can store carbs really quickly as glycogen. Delaying carb consumption by just two hours cuts down the rate of glycogen resynthesis by 50%. And that's really important for people to know, particularly for people who work out multiple times a day. Those are the people who need to worry about this and need to worry about eating carbs immediately and restoring glycogen. But for the rest of us, there's really no rush on refilling these glycogen stores. We have 24 hours to do that so we can take our time. For those people needing to consume protein and replete glycogen after a workout, here's how you do it. Follow the same recommendations for the pre-workout amount and quality of protein, trying to eat about 20 to 40 grams of a protein-like whey that's rich in essential amino acids and leucine. And to replenish glycogen quickly, try to eat about 1.2 grams of carbs per kilogram of body weight each hour for the first four hours after a workout. Now, if this seems like a lot to you, it is. Remember, these rules are for people like professional endurance athletes, not a person going to the gym once a day and working a mostly sedentary job. These folks don't need to worry about restoring glycogen levels quickly, and their calorie and carb requirements probably aren't even high enough to fit this amount of food in. To sum things up, there is a place for nutrient timing. And if you wanna get the most bang for your buck out of your workouts, here are your takeaways. One, eat one to four grams of carbs per kilogram of body weight before your workout if possible. For most people, toward the lower end will work. And if you don't have all that many grams of carbs to work with in a day, another way to distribute these would just be to eat about 30% of your daily total before your workout. Two. Try to eat 20 to 40 grams of protein within an hour or two of your workout or an hour or two after. If you really want to make sure you're maximizing muscle synthesis, feel free to do both. It's not absolutely necessary, but it certainly won't hurt. Three, if you're doing two a days and need to quickly replete glycogen and optimize recovery, aim to eat about 1.2 grams of carbs per kilogram of body weight each hour for the first few hours after a workout. Or if you're like most people and are interested in maximizing recovery but don't have that many carbs to work with, a more simple way to distribute carbs would be to eat 30% of your daily total after your workout. But when it comes to nutrient timing, don't make things harder than they need to be. It can be so easy to get lost in the details. Just try to remember, 
if you eat the right amount of calories and get the right amount of protein, you're gonna have success as you move towards your goal.